Hello again, I am Blondie, and this is a review of one of the least sophisticated lenses I have ever used. It is a lens that recently acquired the lowest scores ever published on DxOMark.com's test process. Its score is lower than each and every one of the 2,872 other lenses they've tested over the years before this one. But that's the point. This is the 15mm f8 body cap prime lens from Olympus. It goes by the fairly self-explanatory moniker BCL-15. That's body cap lens, 15 for 15mm. And it's been specifically, well, let's choose a kind word and say it's been specifically crafted to be a toy. A fun thing to slap on your micro four thirds camera body and go experimenting. It weighs barely anything, it's thinner than an anorexic stick insect with the flu, and its optical design is comprised of just three lens elements. It's manual focus only, well to be specific it has two preset focus positions that you flick between with a little lever. It goes to either hyperfocal for everything from about a meter to infinity, or close up for things about 30 centimeters in front of the lens. Again, that's about a foot for those of you in the USA who are stuck in pre-Civil War measurement systems. There's a third position that engages an integral lens cap to protect the precious high precision optics. <laughs> and you can own one for about 50 bucks. But would you want to own one? Is it worth throwing just 50 bucks on one of these things? Well, let's find out what happened when I popped it onto my Olympus EP3 and wandered into the world. Well, the first thing I learnt is that using this lens in any regular mode results in something less than inspiring. Things are sharper than you'd expect, colour and tone are reasonably pleasant, but let's face it, the results are a bit shrug-worthy. Not unsurprising really, but when you start playing with your camera's built-in art mode filters, things start getting much more exciting. In fact, I imagine I'll not be going out on a limb in suggesting that Olympus designed this lens especially for their built-in art modes. So once I flicked over into these, at least in my case, often ignored art mode filters, a smile started to creep across my face. Suddenly, this silly little lens started to make sense to me, and my curiosity in it, and my small gamble of throwing 50 bucks away on it, started paying off. There are two types of camera accessories I get excited about. The first is the practical ones, the ones that make shooting easier. The second are the ones that make shooting funner. Guess which one this is? Around the edges it's a little bit soft of course, but not overly so, certainly not as much as I'd expected. And it feels very natural, it's not fake or forced, it's kind of organic to the lens and not some kind of effect that's been applied. There's a little vignetting too, but again it's a natural part of the lens and it works really nicely with the art mode filters. Like I said before, there are two focus positions that click into place, but you can also swing that lever about freely to have some relatively limited ability to pull focus manually, which can be of some use in video mode when pulling between a background and a foreground subject. And speaking of video mode, because Olympus's art modes don't work very well in video mode, specifically they're too processor intensive to give you full frame rate images, which in itself may be an effect you want to play with, but for the most part you'll be back to shooting video in standard mode. But because by its nature, HD video is much lower in resolution than the stills you were shooting, the lens actually performs quite well, even without the art modes. In fact, I'll go as far to say as that some of these shots look downright pretty. At the very edges of the image you will catch a slight hint of barreling from this wide angle lens. You should be able to see it on the horizon line at the bottom of the frame there, but you know what? That's a no-dar comment too. I'm starting to feel silly going through the list of regular lens faults and aberrations that one would usually look for in a lens review. Mentioning them at all kind of feels like I'm missing the point of the lens all over again. Fact is, I think this is a lens every Micro Four Thirds user should own. It's cheap, it's fun, and it encourages experimentation with approaches and filters that many people may think beneath them. Until, that is, they try it and finally figure out how fun and refreshing it is to have this kind of playtime. Street shooters will love this lens too. It has that kind of old school look that many street photogs love. The wide angle field of view is ideal for that type of photography and, as a bonus, the flat lens keeps your camera pocketable and very subtle looking if you prefer a candid shooting style. 
low light shooting is a bit more difficult. The lens has a fixed aperture of f8, so you'll be pushing the ISO a bit higher than usual in dim lighting conditions, but any additional noise from the high ISO is less of an issue simply because of what this lens does anyway, so all in all, not too bad. But that said, this lens is certainly at its very best on bright sunny days, fun days, days of adventuring outside, frolicking if you will. So yeah, final verdict, got a Micro Four Third system? Buy this lens. Seriously, just buy it. Go now, order it now. If you can't have some fun with this on your camera, then perhaps you need to have a longer talk with your therapist about upping your dosage. Because I am an incredibly cynical, very grouchy man at times, and I had a goddamn blast with this lens, and I will continue to do so. So anyone who can't have fun with this lens is probably best to stay away from society in general. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.